so for the oxidation numbers video, I'm going to do the practice problems that are on page 219 in your book at the bottom, and I'm just going to do uh, number one. Number one has A through K, so this might take a while. A through K. So A is HF. To figure out the oxidation numbers on each of these elements, you look at the ones that you know for sure. Fluorine, you know there's only one thing that fluorine can be, and that's a positive, I mean, sorry, negative, whoa, negative one. Fluorine is always a negative one. If it is in a compound, no matter what, fluorine can't be anything else. And since this whole thing has to be balanced, if fluorine is a negative one, then hydrogen is a positive one. Uh, B is carbon tetra iodide. <clears throat> uh, iodine is a halogen. Halogens are usually, let me switch colors again. Halogens are usually negative one, and this is no exception. Whenever a halogen comes at the end of a compound, you can be pretty sure that it's going to be a negative one. And we have four of them. So if carbon is our X, then we're going to add to that four times negative one, or you can just put negative four. And the whole thing's going to equal zero. So what is x? Well, x is positive 4. Remember, pause this if you want to work this out and don't want to, you know, have me talking all over your work. C, H2O. In most compounds, and in pretty much all the compounds you're going to deal with, oxygen will be a negative 2. So if we're trying to figure out hydrogen, uh, you can say that hydrogen is x. So 2x plus negative 2 is going to be equal to 0. So X in this case is positive one. Each hydrogen is positive one. Okay, D is PI3. This is the first different one that we have dealt with. Um, iodine again, it's at the end of the element, or at the end of the compound, so it's going to be a negative one. Phosphorus is going to be our X. So X plus negative three, three times negative one gives us negative three is zero. Therefore, x has to be positive three. This is one of those occasions where phosphorus actually gets to be positive. Doesn't happen very often. Yeah, well, maybe it kind of does. All right, next we have CS2. Sulfur in most compounds, when it's last, whenever the element is last in the compound, it's the negative one. And when sulfur is negative, it's a negative two. So we have carbon will be our x plus 2 times negative 2 is, why is it connecting like that? That's really annoying. Negative 4. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, that's just getting on my nerves. Come on. Um, and so x plus negative 4 is going to be equal to 0. Therefore, x is positive 4. Carbon is pretty much always going to be a positive 4. There's very few occasions. I'm going to erase these and, and continue on when I don't have lines all over the place. So starting with F, F is Na2O2. Sodium is a group one metal. Group one metals are always positive one. And so oxygen this time is gonna be our X. And this is one of the weird times that oxygen is not a plus two. So you have two times positive one gives you two. Add to that two times x, because oxygen is our x this time, and the whole thing equals zero. Well, x is negative one, and this is one of the times that oxygen, this O2, is actually something called peroxide. The same peroxide that's in hydrogen peroxide. All right, G is H2CO3. I'm gonna figure out the charges on all three of these. Well, Pretty sure that oxygen is going to be a negative 2 because it's not in an O2. Uh, and pretty sure that hydrogen is going to be a plus 1 because whenever hydrogen comes first in a compound, that's when it's a plus 1. So we have 2 times positive 1 gives us 2. Carbon is our x plus 2 times negative 2 is negative 6 equals 0. Solve for x. x is plus 4. H, we get our first polyatomic ion. So NO2 with a negative one charge. Again, two, or two, sorry, oxygen is pretty much always a negative two. And nitrogen is going to be our X. So X plus two times negative two is negative four. And this time, instead of equal zero, it's going to equal our charge. So it equals negative one. So solve for X, and you get nitrogen is plus three. Okay, I. 
is SO4 with a negative 2 charge. Guess what oxygen is? It is a negative 2. So sulfur is our X. Plus 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Again, this time we equal, we always equal the charge. It's just usually on a compound the charge is 0. In this case, the charge is negative 2. Solve for X. Sulfur is a plus 6. Sulfur can do that because it's got it, it can do that, just don't worry about it, it can do that. Alright, H. No, I'm sorry. Woo, forgot my alphabet. J is ClO2. Minus. Um, oxygen, big shocker here, is a negative 2 charge. Chlorine is going to be our X this time. Usually, if you notice, the first element um, is always the, the unknown. Here, granted, the hydrogen, you know, we knew what that was, but... It's almost always the first element. Add to that 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and the whole thing's going to equal negative 1. Looks just like this one over here, so that means x is a positive 3. Last but not least, k is iodate. IO3 with a negative 1 charge. Oxygen is a negative 2. Iodine's going to be our x. So x plus negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Whole thing's going to equal negative 1. Solve for x. Iodine equals a positive 5. Now, if you need any more help on this one, I will be here Wednesday morning, tomorrow morning, but that's, this is tomorrow's when I'm actually teaching you this. Um, I will be here Thursday morning and Thursday afternoon, and I will be here Friday morning if you need help for this.